Good evening and welcome to Grace Church Cathedral. This is evening prayer and a meditation for Thursday, December the 14th, the Feast of St. John of the Cross. Evening prayer begins on page 117. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you, O Lord. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, it will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. <clears throat> o gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Psalm pointed for this evening is Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. <clears throat> the Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of the Kings. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then Elijah was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. <clears throat> the angel of the Lord came a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. And he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? The word of the Lord. So today is the feast day of St. John of the Cross. He's a 16th century Spanish mystic poet. He was a monastic, and his story is rather fascinating. Uh, normally, we do not associate monastics with sort of uh, infighting to the point of putting each other in prison, yet that's what happened with St. John of the Cross. Uh, the long and the short of it is he was associated with a reform movement of the Carmelite order, and he was a very extreme observer of uh, the, the discipline of that way of life and some of his uh, fellow monks didn't really like his extreme observance and so he wound up being thrown in prison. Um, you can't make this stuff up but while he was in prison, this is where he kind of has his deep, deep, deep religious experience, um, he's more or less brought down very low. Uh, there's no consolation left, there's no sense of, of hope of getting out of, of the prison uh, and it is in this time frame 
that he has this experience of what he calls the dark night of the soul, which is essentially a sort of loss of all um, faith, loss of all sense of God's presence, a loss of kind of your bearings spiritually. And he's brought down so low that he just, it's, it's almost like he's in the, the depths of despair and can't find a way out. But at the very sort of bottom of that pit of despair, if you will, he does find that if he just embraces the darkness and says, that's fine, it's here, it's going to just take me, um, and I'm going to sit in it, that is where God comes back in, or God comes in again, and he goes on to have a sort of spiritual renewal and writes this marvelous work called The Living Flame of Love, and the it's the sort of the legacy that John of the Cross leaves the church is this idea that if you do find yourself in a spiritual doldrum or the sort of depths of spiritual bereftment, God is still there. And if you just hang on, if you just sit in the darkness, if you're willing to sit in the darkness, that sometimes that is when God will reveal God's self more, more fully to you and that flame of love that can erupt in a heart that seems cold and dead makes you even more alive on the other side of the darkness. And so John of the Cross is, is, is a um, spiritual master who sort of charts that course and explains, uh, for those who can hear, that that is sometimes what happens to us. That sometimes we lose the sense of God's presence, that we lose the sense of God being with us, accompanying us, and walking with us everywhere. And that sense of God's presence just vanishes. And we're left without this, uh, the sense, the feeling that God is present. And it can get even worse that we can you know, sort of we can stop believing altogether. But if we can keep going, if we make our way through that and are willing to just sit there in the darkness and let that darkness be, that that is where God can come back into our lives and re-emerge and bring us up out of the darkness, up out of that despair, and reintroduce us to the idea of love. And that love is much more deep. So we, we give thanks today for John of the Cross's witness that even though we might be suffering through a time of, of spiritual dryness, perseverance can lead us to a place of growth and of greater appreciation for God's love. So for that, we can say thanks be to God. We continue with a Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. <clears throat> On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, we entreat you, O Lord. That there may be peace to your church and to the whole world, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may depart this life in your faith and fear, and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John of the Cross, and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ, we entreat you, O Lord. Judge eternal, throned in splendor, who gave John of the Cross strength of purpose and faith that sustained him even through the dark night of the soul. Shed your light on all who love you in unity with Jesus Christ, our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. Give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the slick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. This time I invite your own intercessions and thanksgivings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May the silver light of the moon guide your steps in the darkness, and the crickets sing you on your way home. And until we meet again, God keep you in the palm of his hand, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>